Welcome back to The Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda. I have made a mega Halloween video today. The DIYs in this video today are some of my favorites from when my channel was itty bitty and you may not have seen them before. So enjoy some of my throwback DIYs. It's another at home dupe. I liked these coasters. They were $8 for the set, which isn't bad, but I knew it'd be really easy to make them ourselves. So first of all, let me tell you, it would be better probably if you could get tiles, little white tiles from the Home Depot, Lowe's or whatever, you know, hardware store. And that way you can skip this step of having to paint over the design that's already on the coasters that you buy at Dollar Tree, because that's what I'm going to have to do with these. As for the skull that will go on the coasters, you could find some napkins to decoupage on them, but if you can't find any napkins that has a skull or whatever design you're wanting, don't forget that you can print on tissue paper. If you have ink in your printer and you have white tissue paper, then you can print whatever design you want and it's really easy to do. Just tape your one sheet of tissue paper down to, I like to use a piece of cardstock so that it's a little heavier and ta I tape around every single edge. So that way there's no fear of your tissue paper getting caught up in your printer. I found this graphic of a skull and crossbones on Creative Fabrica. If you're interested in subscribing to Creative Fabrica, which I do recommend, I'll leave a link in my description box below so you can go and check that out. If you're using an inkjet printer, then you'll need to seal your design with some sort of a clear sealant. I'm using this frosted glass stuff, which worked just fine. And this is to protect your design from bleeding when you Mod Podge it on the coaster later. Then cut out your design and Mod Podge it onto your coasters. And I do make my own Mod Podge. It is a combination of just white school glue and water. If you're having troubles with wrinkles in your tissue paper, it helps to use saran wrap to press those out. And then use a top coat of Mod Podge to seal it all in. You could easily buy the coasters at the store, but it's just so much more fun when someone comes over and admires your coasters and they ask you where you got them and you can tell them you made it yourself. why you will need some of the clip-on bats that you can get at the Dollar Tree and you'll need some wooden beads. Then you'll need something to string your beads and bats on and I'm using black yarn and I'm using the trick with the piece of scotch tape on the end that makes kind of like a shoelace, like the end of a shoelace and it's easier to thread through your beads. When you have your garland about as long as you want it or you run out of beads like I did, now it's time to put your bats in place. And I just sort of eyeballed about how many beads and I separated and put my bat there and then I went down the line like that. Tie a double knot on both ends to keep your beads in place. And then you can make a loop on each end for hanging. And this one too with the wooden beads I think would be really cute for farmhouse Halloween.
these DIYs today are all things that you might find in a witch's house. And what would be more important to a witch than her treasured spell books? You can find these awesome spell books at the Dollar Tree and they're pretty cool just the way they are. But I'm going to dress them up using some totally dazzled gems. These gems are so pretty. They might be just a little too pretty to go on a witch's spell book. So I spray painted them with some flat black spray paint. And hot glue is the perfect thing to use to glue your witchy jewels onto the books. And another idea to witchy up this spell book a little more is to use some of that black glittery ribbon from the Dollar Tree and put that on the binding. With another totally dazzled jewel, of course. And these little embellishments sure do take these spell books from the Dollar Tree up about 10 notches. And I paid $7 for it. I have seen online a seller that had it for $8. So I guess I got a good deal. If I can find that link, I will link it in my description box below if you want to recreate this project. Now I'm going to frame it out using this clearanced picture frame that came from Hobby Lobby. It was only $2 and some change. It didn't have a back. It didn't have glass, but that's okay. I can work with all that. To make this even better, I'm using this vintage grinning black cat mask that I got from Spirit Halloween for $12.99, and he's going to be popping out of the frame. And Yachty was pretty interested to know who this new cat was in the house. The first step was to trace around the picture frame and cut out the poster to fit inside the frame. Next, you're going to need something to use for backing. And I had this fold up cardboard box that I think came from the Dollar General store, but any piece of nice heavy cardboard will work. So then I did the same thing. I traced around the frame and then cut out the cardboard for the backing. To attach the poster to the cardboard, I'm using double sided tape that I got from the Dollar Tree. I used my heavy duty stapler to attach the backing to the frame. And I used hot glue to attach the cat mask to the middle. Um, it wasn't as easy as pie <laughs> to attach the cat because not all of his edges are will be touching. So I just found the places where the mask would be touching the poster and tried to hot glue there. You could add a hanger if you want, but I'm going to use command strips to hang mine on the wall. It probably doesn't surprise you that the black cat is my favorite out of this bunch of vintage DIYs. is the easiest and maybe even the best one of today and you'll need a black bowl and a black plate these are plastic and i got mine at target for 50 cents a piece 
Then I went into Cricut Design Space and I grabbed this graphic, which is free if you're subscribed to Cricut Access, and I'm going to decorate the plate. And I have to mention that this is the very first time that I've ever tried layering two colors of vinyl or lay layering any vinyl at all. And it was a lot easier than I ever had suspected. So there are lots of tutorials out there. I'm not the one to teach you because I'm a beginner at this, but you can find lots of YouTube tutorials on layering vinyl. And this smart vinyl that I used is permanent vinyl and it is dishwasher safe. So I don't even need to seal it with anything. The final step is to hot glue your plate to the bottom of your bowl. And this makes a really pretty cake stand or cupcake stand. thing I'm going to make is the giant Halloween lollipop. I've seen these done for different holidays, different occasions, and they always look so neat. I always wanted to try them. So I'm going to take my shot at it today and I'll throw up on the screen here. This came from Louisiana Woman 1 over at TikTok. I'll leave a link in my description box for her account so you can check out the original inspiration for this. And I'm showing here everything that you need to make your own. I really thought that I was going to make two of these so that I have two pool noodles, two broomsticks, but come to find out one pool noodle just didn't make the lollipop big enough for me. So I used both of the pool noodles on one lollipop. So I'm only making one. So I'm only using one broomstick. The first thing I did was remove all the stickers and labels off of the pool noodles and the broomsticks. Then remove the end cap on the end of the broomstick that you would normally hang on a hook because this is the end that's going to go in the ground. And the opposite end where the broom head would usually go, that's going to go inside of the pool noodle as our lollipop stick. I learned that it helps to bend and twist your pool noodles if they're brand new, like mine were. <laughs> By the way, these came from the Dollar Tree. You'll need to bend and twist them and get them sort of pliable so that it's easier to roll them up in that lollipop shape. Then tape the two ends of the pool noodles together with your packing tape and you want this to stay very good so wrap it a couple of times. Now get ready to roll your duct tape all along these two pool noodles. And so I just started at a diagonal angle and I twisted the pool noodle as I went along. And on the ends, you can just use your scissors to trim off the excess duct tape that hangs out over those edges. Now the Louisiana woman used hot glue. She rolled her uh, pull noodle up like the lollipop shape and she hot glued as she went along. And I'm assuming possibly she had some really heavy duty hot glue in her glue gun. I don't know, but this regular glue stick just didn't do it for me. I, I held it in place for quite a while till I thought that the, the glue was dry and I kept going along, going along, but in the end, it all just popped right back open. So instead of doing hot glue i'm going to wrap it all up with packing tape in the end 
and you won't even be able to tell that it's there because of the cellophane bag that we're going to put as the sucker wrapper at the end. The Louisiana woman did use packing tape just temporarily to hold her lollipop shape, but you know, she removed it at the end of her project. However, I know that my hot glue wasn't going to be strong enough to hold even if that packing tape had held it together long enough for it to dry completely. So I'm just going to leave the packing tape on. And for good measure, I decided to go ahead and put the tape going both ways, up and down and left to right. Um, these pull noodles were a lot harder to roll into this shape than what I thought they would be, but it works. Then I used a long steak knife to kind of drill a hole <laughs> in the center of the lollipop pool noodles. And I did this deep enough that it went through those first three outer rings of the pool noodle because I wanted this broomstick to go pretty far up, as far up as I could get it to go. So it would be nice and secure. Next, I'm going to use some of the basket bags that you get from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a package of two. This is the simplest thing I've found to use. You could use just a roll of cellophane and do it that way, but this is already in bag form. So just stick your lollipop right inside and then all you need to do is tie it off with a bow. You could have whatever type of string you have laying around, jute string or what have you, but I'm using black yarn from the Dollar Tree to tie my cellophane bag to the broomstick. Then just make a bow the best way you know how with the decorator mesh that's from the Dollar Tree. I'm not certain what the best way is. This is just how I did it. I crisscrossed them, I cinched them in the center, and I secured it with a zip tie. I tried hot gluing the bow to the bottom of the lollipop, but the hot glue just wasn't sticking. The hot glue just wasn't working for me at all today. I don't know why. So another way to do it is just use the same yarn or string that you use to tie the cellophane bag to the broomstick and tie your bow to the broomstick. And then you can decorate with your spiders. These spiders happen to come from the Dollar General store. They already had little peel and stick tags on the back of them. So I just stuck them right onto the lollipop. Oh, it just looks so disgusting. I was so happy with the end result of this giant Halloween lollipop. I want to make them for every holiday. The next Halloween outdoor decoration is inspired by Redo Style on TikTok. And this lady uses everything. She recycles and repurposes things that you would never think to repurpose or recycle. And they always turned out great. So I'm going to show here on the screen her account so that you can go check her out over on TikTok. Now the lady on TikTok used an old dress form to make her cousin it, but I don't have that. So I just took inspiration and came up with my own way. And it's using a plunger, which you know you can find at the Dollar Tree. I couldn't find one. The Dollar Tree let me down. The things that they always have on hand, always, <laughs> I couldn't find that day. So I had to get my plunger from the Dollar General store. And I know they have these styrofoam pumpkins at the Dollar Tree. You'll need two of the hula skirts from the Dollar Tree, a hat, and a pair of sunglasses. Oh, and also a piece of black material. It could be an old t-shirt. It could be a 
dish towel, a pillowcase would be great, but I'm using a black dish towel. Okay, so, so far all I did was remove the stem from the pumpkin. And now I'm going to jam the end of the plunger down into the pumpkin. And you can see it's kind of wonky, willy-nilly. It doesn't, it's not like a tight fit. So I'm going to use hot glue. Hot glue, don't fail me now. I'm going to use a gob of hot glue and I'm going to secure that plunger around inside the styrofoam pumpkin. The black material is used just in case the hula skirt wants to separate or gets a little piecey and you don't want any of that orange pumpkin showing from behind. You want it to look like, you know, cousin it, like there's nothing under there or if there is anything, just a black void. You need to cinch your hula skirts tight like you know arrange them so that they're all very close together and tie it tightly and this way all the strands of that i want to call it raffia that's what i use them for um so i'm going to be out of out of raffia at the end of this project i'll have to go buy some because hula skirts are out of season but anyway i digress you need to cinch your hula skirts tightly and cut off the excess jute string so that you can hot glue them to the top of Cousin It's head. So one hula skirt is going to be used like for the front side and one hula skirt is going to be for the back side. I found this hat from a Goodwill store. So I know that they have hats at Party City. They have hats at Spirit Halloween. You could find probably a more Cousin It type hat if you looked. He wore like a bowler hat, I think. But anyhow, this is the hat that I found. It was only a couple bucks. And these are some sunglasses that I already had on hand. So just hot glue the hat to the top of his head, hot glue the sunglasses. I did one dot in the middle, like on the nose piece. And then I put some hot glue on the ear pieces to hot glue to the towel that's uh, under all of that hair. And that's it, he's done. Um, I kind of think he looks more like a member of ZZ Top than Cousin It, but regardless, I love him anyway. The first thing we'll work on is the Halloween chandelier. You will need a hula hoop and you can get those at the Dollar Tree. These small bowls come in a pack of four from the Dollar Tree. A set of four LED remote control candles. I got mine at Michael's on sale for $12. Four plastic chains from the Dollar Tree. One shower curtain ring. I didn't have just one, so I had to buy the whole pack. If you can find a black one, that would be perfect. And one wispy grapevine. I'm using this wreath that I got on clearance at the Dollar General store for just a couple bucks. So those are the main ingredients for this project. We'll be using some other things along the way. I'll show you what they are later. And so we're ready for the first step. You'll need to take all your tags and labels off of your hula hoop. 
And this part is optional, I guess, but I wanted to remove whatever it is inside of the hula hoop that makes the little rattly noise, which I was really curious to find out what's inside of there, and I still don't really know what they are, but a whole gob of them comes pouring out. See, look at that. Uh, they were just little white. I don't know if they were pieces of plastic or they were just really strange. I wanted to make sure that the hula hoop is going to stay connected, so where the ends meet, I wrapped it up with some black duct tape. And these are the small bowls that I'm talking about that you get at the Dollar Tree, a set of four for just a dollar. You find them in the party wear section with the um, punch bowls and things like that, all the plastic stuff. I want to make sure these are as stuck on as they absolutely can be. So I'm using JB Weld Minute Weld and this epoxy is great for projects where you really need stuff to stick. I get mine at Walmart, but I think you can get it at pretty much all hardware stores. It comes with two different kinds of adhesive that you have to squeeze out of this plunger type thing and then mix it up with a popsicle stick. And I just use that same popsicle stick to smear some on the place that I'm wanting the bowl to stick and then put the bowl down, hold it tight for a few minutes. It says one minute epoxy, but really I hold it on for I don't know, maybe three. When all four bowls are stuck down pretty good with the JB Weld, I want to flip it over to the underside and then use Gorilla Glue hot glue to make sure that it is extra stuck around the edges. Now it's ready for painting. You could take the whole thing outside and spray paint it with black spray paint, which is what I really intended to do. However, when I went to buy my black spray paint, being that it's Halloween, there was no black spray paint in my whole town to be found. <laughs> so I'm not gonna let that stop me. I'm using some almost black chalk paint that I have. It's called Toasted Poppy Seed. I thought it was black when I bought it, but it's really a dark, dark charcoal but I'm gonna use it up because I have so much of it. And this is how it's looking with two coats on the underside. When you flip it back over to the top side, you can see the hula hoop showing through the clear bowls, which I guess if it's gonna be hanging up on the ceiling, you probably won't really see it, but I wanted it to be finished, so I went ahead and painted the inside of the bowls too. And here she is all painted up with a couple coats of paint and dried and ready for the next step. For me, the next step is taking one of these shower curtain rings and painting it black. You of course can skip this step if your shower curtain ring is already black. And here's where it starts to get exciting. This is where you bring in the four Dollar Tree plastic chains. And if you'll look at the end of the chains, you'll see that they come apart really easy. Um, <laughs> so that was perfect for slipping right around the hula hoop. So I put one chain in between each little bowl that will be holding our candles. Then at the opposite end of each chain, I'm going to use my shower curtain ring to hold them all together. Now for the decoration, I suppose you could use any kind of garland that you really like, but I wanted this to look like witchy and kind of like it's out in nature sort of. So that's why I chose to use a wispy grapevine type thing. Um, I was lucky that I already had this wreath on hand and so I just plucked all those yellow flowers off of it. And then there is a piece of wire that 
keeps the whole wreath wrapped up. So I used my wire cutters to cut that wire and then I unwrapped it, letting all of that wispy grapevine fall free. So when you get the wreath took apart, if that's the route you're taking like I did, <laughs> uh, there are several little sections. And so I laid out each little section around the whole hula hoop. And I was lucky that this wreath happened to be just the right amount of that wispy grapevine. And if you're thinking this looks like a huge mess, you would be correct. <laughs> it was a pretty big mess to clean up afterward, but it's totally worth it. So now we're going to attach that wispy bramble <laughs> branchy stuff to the hula hoop. And I'm using some black wire that came from the Dollar Tree. I secured one end by twisting it up like a bread tie and then I just wound the wire and added in the pieces of branchy stuff as I went along and just wound it all around the hula hoop. You could keep on embellishing as much as you like, put some spiders and bats or whatever makes you happy, but I was going for simplicity. And here are my remote control candles. I was so happy to find these so you don't have to get up and down on a ladder to turn these candles off and on. And here it is hanging from my living room ceiling. I am so happy with this. I could just do a dance. admire those little Halloween towns that they always have set up in the department stores with the little characters and the lights and the little houses but they're usually a lot of money so I came across this dollhouse and another dollhouse at the Goodwill and this one was only one dollar and the second one I'll show you was only two dollars and I thought they would be perfect to transform into my very own little haunted dollhouses. All I'm going to use on this house is various different colors of paint. And the first thing I'm going to do is paint the whole thing with sort of a primer coat of black. This is more to just have a base coat down so that the rest of my layers of paint will have something to stick to. Some sort of paint with a primer in it would be awesome, or you could take it outside and spray paint the whole thing. I'm just using what I had on hand, which was the Kills uh, chalk paint. Now, of course, the house looks plenty creepy enough just painted black, so if you wanted to leave it that way, you absolutely could put some lights in it and stop right here. But I'm going to add some details to the house. So I'm going to have all these different various sizes of brushes to get all the little details. These are the color paints I used to paint the siding because I wanted a dirty white. And as you can see, I got the paint all over the trim, but it's gonna be touched up in the end. Just trust the process. The next step in my process was to add some worn places to the siding where it looked like the paint has worn off of the house or chipped off of the house. So I'm using my Waverly paint and truffle to accomplish this effect. And I'm using a foam brush. And as you can see, I'm just barely getting paint on my brush and then I'm dragging and wiping that paint back off on the side of the paint can just so that I have the littlest amount and I'm mostly just dry brushing it on. 
I know that so far this project looks not quite right, but trust me, there is a method to my madness. And I think that the more layers of paint that you add onto these things, the more realistic they start to look. I mixed gray and black together so that I could paint all of my trim a color that was not quite black, but a dark color. And this is your opportunity to fix those places where you might have gotten a little messy with your lighter color paint. With a smaller detail brush and the darker color paint, it's just really easy to go in and touch those places up. I wanted my window frames and my door frame and my door to pop a little. So I did go back in with just plain black chalk paint to do the window frames and the door. I wanted to make the illusion that the front steps were old, creaky, rotted wood boards. And so I did some truffle paint, which is the brown chalk paint. And then I went back over that with some black. And I think that gave it a real, you know, rotty wood effect. The trim on the house was looking just a little too clean for my liking. So I decided to dry brush a layer of black on the top. Then I used the black chalk paint to fill in the roof a little better. Here is the before, the $2 Goodwill dollhouse. And here is the creepy spooky after. I'm gonna start out with the easiest ones first, and the easiest is this boo, and it is adorable, but look at that price tag. To make this, you'll need some letters. I found these at Michael's. They were only a couple dollars a piece, and they had different sizes. I liked this size because it's flat on the bottom, so they'll stand up. You'll also need some felt spider webs, also from Michael's, and was half off. Then just go by the picture on the Grandin Road site to see where the placement of the spider webs should be and cut them down accordingly. And hot glue them in place. I got mine done and realized something didn't look quite right about the B and I realized I had the spider web on upside down. So I just peeled it off and redid it. And that's the dupe. It took about maybe $7 to make this. So I was really happy. Well, here I am loving the gold touches with Halloween, which I didn't think I ever would, but look how charming this is, but it does not have a very charming price tag. There are only a few simple ingredients you'll need to make your own. You'll start out with a set of books. I chose to do three books, one large, one medium, one small, but you could do, I think Grand and Road actually had four or five books in their stack. So however many that you like. And I want to point out that once I took these jacket covers off of these books, 
The colors of them were beautiful. I had a green, a black, and a maroon, which I, it surprised me. I didn't know what colors I was getting because so I'm painting them. But look how pretty those are together. If you weren't going to do anything, they make a pretty book stack. Before we begin painting the books, first we need to rough them up a little bit. So around the edges where the pages lie, that, that's too new, too pristine. We need to do something with them. So I'm going to show you two ways to make these pages look like they're from older books. The first way is to trim around all the edges of the pages. This is time consuming, but it is the lesser messy way of the two ways that I'm going to show you. Also, this is the preferred method. If you have sinus problems you'll understand why when i show you the next method but this is the more time consuming but less messy way the second method is to use a utility knife to scrape along the edges of the pages which roughs them up it tears them and you can even cut into the book like you see i'm doing here but the the downfall to this is it creates a lot of dust like really fine dust and it does get everywhere including up your nose so uh, you pick the method that works better for you or if you don't even want to rough up your book ends you know that's that's your choice but um I think I like this method better for me just because it's faster now if you look carefully on the Grand and Road website the picture of this book stack you'll see that it has a leather binding and like leather fronts. So I'm going to use, of course, the Dollar Tree faux leather. I'm gonna cut pieces that will just go on the edges of the books, just like so. And I used hot glue to glue them down. I used some hemp string to use for some little embellishments on the binding of the book, so I just hot glued those down. I wish I had been looking at the Grandin Road picture to see exactly where their embellishments were, but unfortunately I used my camera that has the picture on it for my filming device, so <laughs> I couldn't do both things at once. So I just did for memory, but you can look exactly on the picture and see where to put yours. I did the leather bindings on all three of the books with the embellishments, but on the smallest book, which will be the top one in my stack, I'm also going to cut a piece of the leather to go over the whole top. And I hot glued it in place. Then stack the books however you like them stacked and glue them all together. Next, you'll need a large spider. Use the spider of your choice. This one happened to come from Goodwill, but I know they have them at Dollar Tree. Just use a large spider that fits the top of your book stack, and he is going to get painted along with the books. And I used the cheap Dollar General gold spray paint. After it dried and I got it back inside, I saw where some of the leather pieces were popping up and some of the little embellishments were coming back off. So. I just hot glued them back down in place, but don't fuss over everything too much because remember this is a Halloween decoration and these books are meant to look rugged anyway. And then the last thing is to hot glue the spider in place. And I love this book stack for my witchy kitchen.
In this video, I took inspiration from this crafty lady to make a creepy aged mirror. So the first step was to remove all of the hardware from the back of the mirror and try to pop the backing off without damaging it. To my surprise, after removing the backing, there was more hardware that was holding the mirror in. They didn't want this mirror to go anywhere and the whole time that I was doing this, I was thinking, man, I wish they stashed a bunch of money behind the backing of this mirror. Wouldn't that be awesome? Or some really cool old artifact. But there was no money. I did find, however, a stamp on the back of the mirror that said American Mirror Company, and the date was 1965. So that's pretty cool. The next step is to strip the paint off the back side of the mirror. And Susan used citrus strip. I didn't have any of that and I wasn't gonna drive to town to get it, but I did have easy off oven cleaner. So I was really hoping that this little trick would work to remove this paint, same as I've used it for removing varnish off of wood before. So I gave it a heavy coat. I waited about 20 minutes and tested it, but it wasn't ready yet. So I sprayed more and waited an hour. And after that hour, this is what I came back to. It was easily scraping off with my plastic scraper. I will say, make sure whatever you're doing your scraping with does not have uh, slots in it like this scraper does, because see how it's making kind of drag marks or lines down the middle. That shows up in my end project, so um, avoid using something like this. <laughs> Susan actually used a piece of cardboard and that worked great for her, so if cardboard's what you got, that's what you should use. Next, try to clean off that junk with just water. It's straight water in my water bottle and I'm using a microfiber cloth from the Dollar Tree to try to clean off the back of this mirror a little. Now then comes the oxidizing phase, and this is where you'll need to add some bleach to your water. Susan used a 50-50 ratio at first, and then she put a little bit more bleach, so I did the same. Well, I started out with more bleach than water, so I would say uh, three quarters of the bottle is bleach, one quarter of the bottle is water, and you're supposed to just spray it where you want that aged effect and it pretty instantly begins working. And I believe that if you can put it in a sunny spot, it works faster. Then you take a damp paper towel or damp rag and wipe the bleach back away. And this is a process that you'll have to play around with and see, test out spots and see how you like it. Go back and do more because I did it repeatedly. I did several, several times over. Periodically, I would check the front side of the mirror, and this is what you're looking for, little scratched parts that looks like light is coming through. When you have it aged as much as you want, then you need to rinse it with water, and I just used my water hose and left it outside for the sun to dry it. Back inside the house, and the mirror's all dry, and here is how she aged, and I think she's gorgeous in spite of those drag marks that was caused by my plastic scraper. Next, you flip it over and you're supposed to paint the back whatever color you want to show through, which for me would be black. And Susan decided that she wasn't sure she would wanna keep it black. She might wanna do different colors later on. So she actually painted the backing of the mirror, the cardboard backing instead of the mirror itself. But I knew I wanted to keep this as a Halloween decoration always. And so I went ahead and just painted right onto the back of the mirror using black chalkboard paint. This is how mine looked with just one coat of paint. I thought that was gonna be just plenty. I didn't wanna waste a second coat because I think that's gonna be plenty dark enough to show through my mirror. And while that's drying, we need to work on the frame. Now, <laughs> this frame, oh my goodness. Back in the spring, uh, this frame actually started out gold and I painted it white with green underneath. So green first and then white on top. And I have always, always thought that the green looked like mold in the little nooks and crannies of this, of this frame. So I never did like it too much anyway. But now she's going to get painted with black chalk paint and then she's going to get highlighted with gold paint. 
And this is my favorite gold paint to work with. It's by Folk Art. It is their enamels collection and metallic gold. And the reason I like this one better than other gold paints is because it is, it's more of a true gold. It's not so yellowy. So with just a very, very little amount on the ends of your bristles, dry brush that onto whatever um, embellishments your frame may have. Um, this frame actually, or this mirror, I picked up at Goodwill. So check your Goodwill, check your thrift stores, because um, you'll oftentimes find mirrors and picture frames with these embellishments already. She's gorgeous. I love her. I love her so much more now that she's black and gold instead of white and moldy green. Now the next step is to actually put your mirror back in, put your backing back on, and reassemble the whole mirror. And you just saved yourself a whole ton of money by doing it this way because mirrors like these do not sell for cheap. Continuing on with the black and gold theme that I have going here, I'm using this bowl that was $1 at the Family Dollar Store. I know that they sell these at Dollar Tree too. So anyhow, this black bowl, and I'm going to use some of this Model Magic air dry clay to make snakes. Now, my original idea was to buy little rubber snakes from the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Store, but I couldn't find any, and I was going to paint them gold. So since I couldn't find any, well, that means I'm gonna have to make some. So turns out it's not as hard as I thought. So you just roll out your dough <laughs> and make a snake form out of it. And for the head, I just kind of smushed, smushed one end in and it automatically just kind of made a little snout, <laughs> a little triangle head, a little snout for the snake. And then as for the scales, um, I did two techniques. The first technique I used was to take a piece of wire and I twisted it up to make a loop and then I pressed that loop into the clay. And that worked okay, but I was using floral wire and it was a little bendy. So then I came up with my second idea, which was to use a paper clip, which is way better. Use a, start out with a paper clip just one of the small regular paper clips, unless you're making a bigger snake. But yeah, that way you have two sizes on the paper clip actually. And cause on a snake, as it tapers down his tail, his scales are gonna get smaller. So I start out with the bigger end up near the head and then the smaller end of the paper clip down toward his tail. And I used a toothpick to give him some nose holes and I kind of drew in some little indentations where his eyes would be. And there you have it, clay snake. <laughs> Just form them in whatever wiggly kind of snake pattern you want them to go on the bowl as, cause we're gonna attach these to the bowl. I don't know if I said that. And paint them gold or your color of choice. To attach them to the bowl, first I used hot glue and that held them long enough that I knew that they were not going to hold, <laughs> but just long enough to be able to hold them in place so that I can get some super glue up under there and super glue is what's going to hold them better. Thanks for watching my mega video. Let me know if you made it all the way to the end and what you thought of all the DIYs. Have a blessed weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye.